guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review or card game review in this matter this game is called fog and friction western front the world war ii two-player expandable card game it is by war creator studios and it is for two players it takes about an hour an hour and a half roughly depending on if it's your first game or not and is for ages probably 14 or 15 and up it's got some punch to it in the game you're playing as either the allied forces or you're playing as the axis forces and you're vying for territories there is a short game and a long game whether you're going for three specific territories or five specific territories which you're going to be going back and forth against your opponent attempting to gather these areas you're going to have your frontline offense and you're going to have your backline offense in which you're trying to basically destroy your opponent's troops and you're going to be basically be depleting them by turning them over and then if they get hit again for their total strength they're going to get removed from the board and if you can remove all of their forces you'll gain control of that territory that they so desperately want and of course you'll be drawing cards throughout each round combat phases are going to be very specific it goes throughout this little list here which i'll explain down below but the idea remains pretty simple garner your forces put them in the specific placement that you want maneuver them around attack then go through this type of logistics phase in which you're going to try and heal your units or draw more cards for the next round and basically control as many territories as needed in order to win the game Fog and Friction Western Front. Let's go ahead and take you down below. I will show you how the game is set up and what comes in the game and then I'll show you how to play. So here we have Fog and Friction Western Front all set up for the two players that it plays. And as you can see, you're going to be getting two separate decks of cards, the Axis forces and the Allied forces, represented by the uh, Britain flag and the United States flag. And the Axis has got the, it looks like the cross here. And basically what you're going to be doing is taking their two separate decks as well of different locations. So There's going to be like the river location. There's going to be a Tolkon, a Rhone Valley, a farmland, and a city. You're going to shuffle these guys up, and then you're going to go ahead and deal them out so that there are two basic areas in which you're going to be playing the game. It will have a 3x2 grid for each of the different areas in the game, along with each player is going to draw cards. And when you're going to decide who is going to be the attacker first, and the attacker will get two additional cards in their hand. Additionally, each player will get to take two cards from their respective decks decks and there is certain requirements as to which cards you can go ahead and take from the deck mostly it's going to be cards that have a single strength value at the top left hand corner and cards without text except for tactics cards these cards over here are make your own cards so you can kind of do develop your own cards for the game specifically for the different forces as well as you have a sequence of play card that tells you how to play the game for each single player and then you're pretty much ready to go make sure both decks are shuffled up after you've searched for them and begin by starting the deployment phase which we'll talk about now when i explain how to play the game and then follow it with my review of fog and friction so let's go ahead and give you a decent understanding of how to play the game Fog and Friction. And I said before, it's already set up. We've got two random locations. We've got a Riverland and we've got a Woodland area where you can be deploying your units for the allies and for the uh, Axis characters. This player here is the attacker, which means he gets to draw two additional cards. And both players went through their decks and selected two specific cards to choose uh, in order to use for their deployment phases. After they've revealed them, they can go ahead and put them into their hand, making sure that they have placed or chosen some legal cards. In which case, you're going to have three, six, seven, eight, and three, six for the defender. Then you're going to make sure that everybody has a sequence of play card and you've got your deck which has now been fully and completely shuffled. We're not using these cards here because they're make your own cards so we'll go ahead and set them aside and the rule book is over here for clarifications. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the sequence of play and the first thing that we're going to do is the first deployment and whenever you are the attacker you are the one who will be deploying first. And when you deploy, you can deploy any units on either of these sides here. There are three cards that go into the front on either of these locations. So basically what it could look like is one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. These are both separated though. So they indicate what they are trying to go for, whether they're going for the river location or for the control of the woodland location. Uh, you can also have three cards in the back lines as well. And for the most part, you can only place a card in the back line it provided there is one in front of it in the front line but there are exceptions such as if you have something like a uh, helicopter or some type of aircraft unit 
So this guy's gonna go ahead and go first and he'll place some grenadiers right there. And that is going to basically, has, it has a, a cool ability that says forest. If this card this car gains one armor damage and one infantry damage, which is armor, infantry, and this is air damage. Provided that, uh, and air damage, provided that this is in a forest location. Unfortunately, it's not. So he could choose to not play that, or he could choose to play it if he needs that simple damage there. Uh, there's cards like this one here, which is a tactics card, which can, which basically says misdirection. It says redeploy one full strength frontline card and or one full strength support card from one battlefield to the other. So you can maneuver them back and forth. This is kind of like an action card that kind of will help you in some way. And it's going to be used during deployment phase in which you can kind of maneuver your units to correctly give you the most benefit in battle. That's something I'll probably save. This is a bunker, which is basically a defensive card that you can place down below a specific uh, frontline unit which will give you protections against specific units. And then I've got this one here. So this one specifically is going to be the troops, and this is going to be an armored unit like a Sturm Tiger. Uh, so I'll place this one over here. And then we'll place this guy here, this fall slider right there, and I'll place a reinforcements right behind it. Reinforcements are always going to go behind, and they have specific abilities. That, for instance, they can go ahead and protect units, giving them strength in some way. Or they can um, let you draw additional cards from your deck if you discard them at the end of the final combat phase. I'll simply choose to keep the rest of these for the first deployment. And then the next player, the defender, is now going to go ahead and place down as well. So maybe I want to place a bazooka unit there, maybe a rifleman unit there. Um, and then, I, of course, maybe I'll have a rifleman over here. And then let's go ahead and put a landing ship right here. And, uh, hmm, I got artillery here. That's pretty useful, but I don't necessarily need it because there's no uh, aircraft units, and this one specifically targets aircraft. So we'll go ahead and set this aside and keep this for now. After the first deployment step, then you're going to go on to the second deployment step, in which players are now going to be able to play additional cards. Uh, they can choose to go ahead and play them if they'd like. So I can play this Stug uh, 2 or 3 and place it right there. This one is good for a forest location, but yet again, unfortunately, no forest is out. And I could choose to play a tactics or even an artillery. Maybe I'll play this artillery over here and I'll keep these set aside. And then this player will get a chance to as well. Remember, if, if you're the second player, you get less card advantage, but you do get to position yourself better as compared to the other player because you know what they've placed out. And so this is the last turn of the game for deployment, in which case I can go ahead and play something like, maybe I want to place an artillery down here if it might help me. But like I said, this one's not going to help me currently. And this is a damage card. We'll allocate the damage shown on the damage uh, medals to one deployed card uh, for, and in the front line of an enemy. So I could go ahead and play this if I'd like. So I could do this. I could do this. It would basically let me do a, one of the one of the damages to a, a specific unit. So I can go ahead and do that. And if I do damage to a unit, this is the strength of the unit, and these are the specific. Uh, so this is the H HP of the unit basically, and these are the different damages that it will do. So for instance, it'll do one to armored units. It'll do two to any infantry, and it would do zero to any air units. In which case, I'd be doing one damage to this here, and it would be turning sideways. When you do that, it's basically depleted, which means that in this case, a depleted unit cannot attack, but it's still on the board defending the location. After that happens, you're going to move on to the combat step. And the combat step is pretty simple. You're going to be going in a flow chart of sorts, and it tells you on this card here how it works. You'll start with anti-aircraft, calculating the damage total, and then allocating damage to your own support air cards as per the damage allocator rules. And the allocator rules are pretty simple. You would add up all air damage and choose to assign it to an opponent's air vehicle. So for instance, if I had two damage from artillery, to a, a helicopter that had two strength, I would then do that and turn it to the side, depleting it. And then after that, we would move on to the next step because there's no anti-aircraft here. I have one, but it's of no use right now because there's no aircraft out, so I'm gonna save it. Ground targets. Uh, so I do the full strength of any of my air units and I would target either the front or the back line and try and defeat any ground targets that they possibly can. After that, I would move on to the artillery. Uh, so, so basically, say so yeah, basically support artillery can then design design targets, calculate damage total, then allocate damage as per the allocation rules. The same would go on. So in this case, if I had any artillery, which I do over here, I would then be able to allocate, and I could choose the front or the back. This would do two damage. So I would go ahead and say, okay, two damage, and I'll direct it at this. I can choose front or back. I'll choose the front. Whenever damage is allocated, you're always going to let your opponent choose, but they have specific rules as to how they choose. They have to always choose the highest valued unit that can be depleted. And in this case, there's just this one specifically, so it would become depleted. 
we would follow up with the front line now. And the front line is basically going to be a simultaneous action phase in which you would be allocating um, from one side to the next. So in this case, we're, we're just doing the combat for this area here first and then this area here. So what I was showing you about the artillery here, this wouldn't actually happen until after this went forward. So that's technically not occurred yet. So we're going to move on to now just doing the front line. So that's currently what we have in this location here. So it says total the infantry and armor damage of all full strength frontline cards. And then they're added and allocated as per damage allocation. So this guy has been turned to the side, so he's depleted, so he can't actually use his damage to attack these guys. But this one's not, so we can do one damage to uh, one of the units over here at the highest strength. And then, okay, we'll go ahead and choose, and we'll turn this guy over. And uh, these guys, because they weren't depleted previously, they both will get to allocate their strength. So we, we're going to have... Uh, three to the strength uh, for infantry units, which we get basically turn this to the side because it only has one. And then it also has one for armor and this only has one. So this would actually get removed because once you've turned it over to the side once, the second time it takes full lethal damage, it would get removed and this would just get discarded. After that, you'd move on to do the same combat step for over here. You'd go throughout the anti-aircraft, the ground, the artillery, front line, and then logistics. The last thing I didn't talk about was logistics, which is basically where you're able to use reinforcements and the, and the like, in which case you can do stuff like discarding this guy to draw an extra card for the next round, or you can go ahead and utilize this guy to bring a character or something back from being depleted. So if this guy got turned to the side during combat, I could use this unit to turn this back up and then discard this specific unit, which is going to be rather helpful. If I didn't want to do that and just leave this to the side, I could then discard this card to give me an additional card from the deck there. But if this was the case, I'd actually turn it up. Uh, basically, if this was the end of the round, it looked just like this. Nobody would conquer any of these areas. But let's go ahead and say that this actually happened. These two units have now controlled the area. There's none of the Axis forces here. In which case, the Allies would actually take control of this river force. These guys would get discarded. And now they are one. he's one closer to victory. And he's going to reveal a new one for the next round after this goes as well. On the next round, reveal these from the decks that they need to go from based on where they were captured. And then you're going to draw three cards for each deck. One, two, three. One, two, three. You'll additionally draw any cards based on any reinforcements you discarded. So in this case, if I discarded one, I draw one. And you're also going to draw a bonus card for each location you control. The attacker is still going to be the same unless the attacker conquers an area. And if an attacker conquers the area, then the next side is going to be the attacker for the next round. And play will continue as such until in a shorter game, some side controls three locations and in a longer one, a side controls five locations. And that's the basic idea of the game, tactically choosing the spaces in which you want to place your units and going through the specific family tree of damage allocated on the sequence of play card, attempting to remove units from one side of the board or the other. And if you're able to conquer these specific areas in order to win the game, you will. Each deck is going to also come with, in this specific box, an expansion of sorts. And the expansions are listed on the bottom right-hand side, uh, uh, basically on this side like this. It'll tell you AE, I believe, and all the basic ones are called something else. So yeah, AC is the average ones, and then AE is the expanded ones. And it tells you in the rulebook how that works. If you want to play with the base game, you can take out the AE. And if you've already played it for the first time, you can add in the bonus cards to the deck. It is an expandable card game, so you will be able to to mix and match certain things depending on what comes out for fog and thick friction but for the most part that's the idea of how you play the game going about tactically trying to defeat your opponents and controlling the front line of a world war ii battlefield so let's talk about a couple caveats for fog and friction first before we get in my review because there's a lot of nuances in this game one thing is you cannot destroy a unit on the first uh, first uh, attacking phase basically so if it is just been deployed and then you're attacking uh, during maybe let's say uh, the plane hits it right and turns it to the side and depletes it, then it cannot be killed. It would go, on, it would move on to damage to the next one and the next one. Uh, but if you did damage to it the first time in the first one of the first phases of combat and then a later phase of combat, you did another damage which was enough to destroy it, that would then kill it. Additionally, let's say you did three damage to infantry and you had a guy that was worth two, a guy that was worth one, and a depleted three. Well, you would be able to choose as the person taking the damage, but you have to choose the highest unit. So the two would turn to the side 
and then there would be one damage left, and then the one would turn to the side. Thusly, all three would be depleted. You would not actually be able to choose the one three that had already been depleted, because you're always attacking live units first, and the live ones are the ones that are basically operational, as opposed to the ones that are kind of sleeping on the job. Additionally, there's bunkers as well. There's the different artilleries. There's certain units that have specific abilities on them, like we talked about with a couple of them. Uh, for instance, these riflemen. If you deploy it to a battlefield that you capture, you can return this card to your hand as opposed to discarding it, because in general when you capture a battlefield, all the cards that are in that battlefield, regardless of whether you win or not, they are going to be removed, and then in that case you're going to be out those cards. But with certain cards like this Rifleman, it's going to go back to your hand to be used for another location. All of the artwork in this game is really, really cool. You have a lot of this in what looks to be realistic World War II images. Uh, I gotta show you guys some of the stuff. I mean, I'll put it up there for you. But there's beautiful tanks. It shows all the anti-aircraft. Shows the soldiers going to war. It's very, very realistic. And in, in general, it fits the theme very, very well. Obviously, this is a World War II card game, expandable game, and it plays like a war game. The cards are fine quality. They work really well. The box is very nice. And you see exactly what you see is exactly what you're going to get from this type of a game. When I talk about a war game, an expandable card game being put together, it's a very unique thing. First of all, a war game is said to be very, very tactical and very, you know, that you have to be... You have to be doing a lot of maneuvers, and you have to be choosing exactly what spaces you want to play on. The attacker is going to get the advantage to a certain extent as far as card advantage, but the defender gets to kind of choose where he allocates the cards and how he allocates to basically combat the overwhelming force that is coming against him. When you take an area, that basically means you're going to be losing more units off of that area that you probably shouldn't have lost, uh, or, or that you kind of have to lose because they, they're going home basically. Well done, guys. So you get additional cards for that. That fits thematically as well. It's also a win ever you are using your, your your reinforcements you can kind of choose to either use them as medics to heal your depleted characters or you can basically send them back to draw a new card so you're basically re-enlisting some new soldiers there's the different locations which in general are just really nice images of I, i'm getting of black and white locations in which you would likely see in a world war ii movie or and during World War II it's, itself, but those actually will give benefits to certain cards. Like I was talking about before, if you're in a forest with this character, it gets plus one to all three of its different bonuses. Utilizing them is very important. This game has got a lot of intense strategy to it. Uh, I was actually not expecting the amount of strategy in this game when I set, out, I set about playing it. We read the rules. The rules are not very intensive or very long, but there is very specific details as to how everything works. It's got some really nice pictures in it to explain how the cards are deployed, types of different damage, types of different cards that you're going to utilize, and how you're going to utilize them, and when you're going to maneuver. Also, during the deployment phase, you can actually change the uh, mix up the uh, cards in a kind of maneuver, so you can kind of put this backline unit with this backline unit and switch it with these two different specific frontline units and you'll want to do that a lot of your choices almost all of your choices are going to matter in this game there's a lot of tactical decision making and that can bring about a lot of difficult decisions additionally of course drawing from a deck of cards is always going to inherit some type of chance so you're not going to know what you're going to get sometimes your opponent might get lucky and get a good amount of aircraft and you might not have the anti-air needed to defeat it but eventually you can kind of allow certain cards to take certain areas so that they will go away, thusly giving you more of an advantage. Don't use all your forces in one area. Defend certain spaces better than others if you want to take that area up. Maybe you want to just build your defenses to prevent players from getting a uh, leather player from getting certain spaces. This game comes down to a lot of difficult decisions and it functions very well as a card game that is a basically combinable game. You're gonna see more cards from this, I, I hope, that will kind of give you that war gamer appeal and that a combinable card game appeal. It's a very unique twist to each of the different genres. And I think for those of you who like war games that want something that's just a two-player game, you can just sit down and play anywhere pretty much. You won't need the big entire field. It's going to give you exactly that feel and that taste that you're going to like with a little bit of randomness as for what cards are going to come out of the deck. And the fact that you can kind of make your own is a nice little twist as well. Overall, this is a fun game. But it's a war game in nature, and it's a tactical decision-making game as well. You have to be ready for some pretty gritty decisions in this game. I'm trying. I'm not overselling you on this point. I want you to make sure that you know that there's going to be a lot of tactical decisions you need to make in this game. And in some cases, it like blew my mind after playing the first game or so. I'm just like, oh wow, 
I did this wrong and this wrong and this wrong and I learned from those mistakes and tried to recuperate those things because I realized that if I do this specific thing again or if I send too many units in this area then I'm going to end up in, in, in the dugout. I'm not going to be doing very well throughout this game. And I've just gotten better and better as I've played this game. If you're interested in Fog and Friction, go ahead and take a look down below. For all you war gamers out there that want a card game, this is going to be the game for you. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you want to take a look at the game Fog and Friction Western Front by War Creator Studios, you can go ahead and take a look down below in the description. They're currently selling, I think. It'll be there when it's up, as well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. This game is really, really intriguing. It's got a lot of choice. I don't know. It's, it's still making me think about playing my next game. Also, go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. We give away games or we play games with the audience. We have a lot of involvement with the community. It's a lot of fun. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to battling out with you in World War... Okay, I don't look forward to battling out anything with you, unless it's a card game, next time. <laughs>